disarmament commission that was created by the head of state is, is an expression of the head of state's um, commitment, his determination to solve the Anglophone problem. Amongst the other measures he has taken, he has taken other measures which are so many, we want to list them, there are many. The Bilingualism and Multiculturalism Commission, the humanitarian uh, uh, assistance of over 13 billion that is given to these unfortunate brothers and sisters of the Northwest and Southwest who are displaced, including those who are even refugees. Uh, all the measures he has taken in the area of justice, higher education and so forth, to make sure that Anglophones from the two, uh, from the Northwest and Southwest, are integrated into the system. The head of state has done a lot. And the recent measure, by creating the Disarmament Commission, uh, Disarmament, uh, uh, Disarmament Commission, Disarmament, I think, uh, re, uh, reinsertion and so forth, is, is a reflection of the president's determination to, to reach out to, the, uh, to these, our brothers and sisters, the young men and women who have taken up arms against their brothers and sisters and against their country. By giving the only branch to them, the head of state is saying that, let bygones be bygones. Come back. Let's forget about what you've done. And let us come back as brothers and sisters of one country, one nation, and talk, and construct Cameroon together. Whatever problems there are, let us talk as normal brothers and sisters. That is an exceptional measure. That Disarmament and, and, and Reinsertion Commission is not intended to harm anybody. It's not intended to deceive anybody. It's not intended to trick anybody. It's rather intended to say, let bygones be bygones, and at the end of the day, nobody will be followed for what they had done in the past. That's incredible. That's an incredible human measure. You see, inherent in that measure taken by the head of state by creating the Disarmament Commission is a sort of humanism that the head of state is demonstrating that, look, you will not be pursued for whatever thing, for what you've done that is bad. You will not be pursued for having hurt some other person. You will not be pursued for having destroyed. You will not be pursued for having violated the law. Just the only thing that is required of you is drop your gun and come back and towards your brothers and sisters. Come back to the house. So you're asking the question, can he resolve the Anglophone problem? I think yes. If the young men and women who have taken up arms have reflected themselves as a matter of conscience and have seen that it is good, it's welcoming to come back to the, to, to the house. And that is, if they can see in the gesture, the initiative, the decision by head of state as a decision of goodwill, as a decision of humanism, as a decision of justice, I think they can do it in less than no time and together we shall all come back and celebrate the mother house that we call Cameroon, the nation that we call Cameroon. And we shall continue to debate and look for solutions to the problems that we've got. People should not forget, no problem in any house or in any nation is solved in one day. As long as there is a nation, as long as there are human beings, as long as there, is, there are people, there will always be problems. But how do you solve the problems? You don't solve the problem by taking up guns. Guns solve no problems. It is brains, it is consciences, it is hearts that solve problems. And that's all the head of state is asking, that these young men who have taken up arms should come back to the house by dropping their guns. Let them come back to the house with their hearts. Let them come back to the house with their consciences. Let them come back to the house with their brains, because we know they have brains. We know they have a heart. We know they have a conscience. All that the head of state is asking is, we, we shall all as one community, one nation, forget about what they've done. Let them come back and let's talk as brothers and sisters in a national fraternity. I think this is a great thing. And the measure, how do you measure that? We measure that by how much the disarmament and reinsertion committee is able to register. In other words, how many guns have they collected? How many people have come back to their centers? This is how you measure it, because you have to have something to measure. Yes, if you don't have something to measure, then you begin to wonder, where are these guns? Why are they not coming to the centers where there's a goodwill, an olive branch, a branch of peace 
Come back to the house. So, will it succeed? The disarmament uh, commission will succeed to the extent that the young men and women who have taken up guns understand that this disarmament commission is an instrument of peace. This disarmament commission is an instrument of goodwill. The disarmament commission is an instrument of, of reconciliation. The disarmament commission is an instrument of, of, of uh, you know, uh, uh, reconciliation and, 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 and conciliation at the same time. You see, the disarmament commission is not an army. It is headed by a civil administration who knows civil administration very well, Governor Fayengu, and the head of state knows very well who Governor Fayengu is. And I think that our young men and women should see in this disarmament commission a kind of a bridge, a bridge towards reconciliation, a bridge towards uh, toward, towards um, normalization, a bridge towards uh, towards uh, towards. Uh, you know, coming back into the fold. It's, a, it's, 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 a, it's an instrument of, of rendering justice and forgetting about what happened, as if nothing happened. I hope they will see in this, in their brains, in their consciences, and in their hearts, I hope this will happen. And once it happens, the answer will be that, to the extent that these young men who have taken up arms respond, the Disarmament Commission will, will succeed. Because I believe that the Disarmament Commission is an instrument of positive politics is an instrument of, um, of uh, moving forward, moving Cameroon forward. It's an instrument of peace and reconciliation. Sure, other, other actions, obviously the head of state has not closed the door to other actions that will be taken. There's no doubt that uh, when we'll have regional elections, for example, as the head of state has announced, that will give added impulse to a lot of people will be council original councillors. Uh, some of these people may be young people, some of these people may be women, but you'll have new legitimacy with these elections that are that are coming. That's one way. There are other ways, uh, there are other actions that uh, the head of state envisages. I'm sure that as he himself has said at the end of year, at his end of year speech uh, last year and uh, during his uh, 6 November uh, um, uh, taking of oath, uh, inaugural speech, the head of state will continue with his dialogue, the dialogue option. And he's carrying it out directly and indirectly, formally and informally. I think the head of state believes in dialogue and I, 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 I trust I, and, and, and I have no doubts that he will continue in that dialogue because the head of state is himself, the embodiment of dialogue. He, he, he epitomizes uh, dialogue and he knows that Cameroon succeeds when and where there's dialogue. Cameroon since 1960 has always moved forward with dialogue. Just look at all that we've done since 1960. Dialogue has always worked and the head of state is the epitome of that Cameroon of dialogue. And that's why he has said it. He, is not, he has not hidden it. That dialogue will work. Does that mean that uh, there the, the, the shouldn't be security measures? Of course, as you know, there is no state without a security dimension. This is almost an attribute of statehood, that as long as you have a state, you always have a security, because state and security go together. Uh, it, it, is, it is what you call uh, the normative attribute of, of every state or any state that is sovereign, uh, that there will always be security. That is very important. And so, but does that mean that uh, security will not be there? Security will be there, but does that mean that security is not the antithesis of dialogue? Security is not, um, is not an enemy of dialogue. Because from what I know, even our members of the forces of law and order also believe in dialogue. <laughs> they, they are promoters of dialogue, also they want dialogue. You know, guns do not dialogue. Nobody dialogues with guns. The only time dialogue is meaningful is when there are no guns. So, I think that it is in our interest to understand that if we want Cameroon, the Cameroon we love so much to move forward. And we know that Cameroon is a country of dialogue. Let us give dialogue meaning by uh, not giving guns the opportunity to be the ones to dialogue because guns have no brains, 
Guns have no hearts. Guns have no consciences. Let us dialogue with our brains, with our hearts, and with our consciences. And I think this is what the head of state has done by creating this disarmament commission and by insisting that he's still open to dialogue and he wants to continue and follow his dialogue option. Because he knows that Cameroon is a land of dialogue. It's a country of dialogue. And we move always to succeed uh, with dialogue. It has always worked for us. Since 1960, by the way.